My topic focuses on climate change and how it relates to emotion. Although I can't really confidently prove this as a result of scientific evidence, I did find a message that was portrayed through Lois Lowry's 1993 dystopian science fictional novel called The Giver. The way that I was able to prove this was through three points. The mem and it had to do with the memories that the giver transmits to Jonas, who is a 12-year-old main character made to be the receiver of memories, which the community was trying to prevent the society from experiencing pain. But not only was it, it preventing them from experiencing pain, which Jonas discovered, that it was also depriving them of, of finding joy and benefits that result from the experiences that come along with the weather patterns. The first weather pattern that I'd like to talk about is snow, through the memory of sledding that, that the giver transmits to Jonas. As a result of finding this memory, Jonas experiences genuine happiness, as well as curiosity as to why they don't have the snow anymore for sledding. And the giver ex explains to him about why they all went to sameness. But how does, this re how does this relate to climate change in our world today? Well, think about how the weather has been, has been getting warmer lately. It's November, it's December now, and usually we would be experiencing snow and colder weather. But the summer days have stuck around a little bit longer than they were supposed to. And as a result, we weren't able to experience the traditions and the happiness that come along with the cold weather and the snow, such as hot chocolate, sledding, building snowmen with your friends, and ice skating. We don't get a chance to experience any of that. The next memory that the giver transmits to Jonas is in two waves. It's fire. It's the memory of fire, and he transmits it through two different ways, positively and negatively. The way in which he portrays it positively is through the memory of firelight and what Jonas interprets as family members all sitting around the firelight exchanging, exchanging presents. And Jonas then experiences a, a feeling of satisfaction, warmth, and love, which he did not get to experience before seeing this memory. The second way in which the giver transmits this memory is negatively, through pain. As humans, we need to experience pain, anger, suffering, sadness, and irritation in order to survive, survival method in order to adapt to our environment. If we can't experience negative emotions, then we cannot adapt to our environment. So Jonas experiences pain for the first time and he's able to actually connect with the pain through the memories. So how does this relate to our world today and climate change? Well, lately we've been experiencing many different fires, the forest fires in California, for example. And this has been separating families and destroying many homes and forests. And so that's, and the third memory that the, the giver transmits to Jonas is that of rain, also excruciating hunger. The first memory that he transmits to him is the rain. And Jonas is able to experience the first, the irritation and the kind of discomfort that the rain brings about, but also the cert, the happiness that all, that of jumping in the puddles and just being able to experience the rain. But the second memory that the that the giver transmits to Jonas is hunger, and the feeling of discomfort that comes along with the hunger. When Jonas finally goes out into the real world to bring back the memories to his people. He experiences rain for the first time, not just through the memories, but for real. And he's able to really experience what it means to be human. And he also experiences excruciating hunger, not just in a literal physical sense, but also a mental starvation for the traditions and the weather patterns that we experience and the emotions that we experience today. So how does this relate to climate change in our world today? Well, we've animals are suffering, for example. Humans experience more hunger because we don't get the nutrients that we need from the animals, and um, neither do we get the fruits or vegetables, or, and it's very hard for us to get clean water too. So not only did I find points from the giver, but I also found um, scientific evidence based on research. And one article that I found was one of a database that explained the definition of climate change. And it said that climate change affects many living organisms. That was my point. 
Not only does it affect living organisms such as humans, but it also affects plants and animals too. The other article that I found was one that was talking about The Giver as a film, which was then made because it was made as a film in 2014. And uh, Carl Thomas in the article says, we need to figure out as a society where we're going. The U.S. just, do, we don't, we do not know where we're headed and we need to start getting it together. Nikki, Nikki Silver in the same article says that we do not want the world that the giver represents today. And so if we do not want the world that the giver represents, we need to change our daily habits. Because if we don't, then not only will weather patterns be eliminated, but also emotions as we know them today.